So um, some of you guys might not be familiar with Ray Kurzweil. Uh, he's, at least last I checked, he was the lead uh, engineer of like artificial general intelligence at Google and has been for years and years. Um, I've been following this guy, obsessed with this guy for over 10 years. I mean, he was like literally my screensaver for like my profile, for like my phone in high school. <laughs> like, it was like, he's like a 65 or at the time he was like a 65 year old man. I think he's like 76 now. Um, but anyway, he, he got famous for having very, very accurate predictions of the future, technological predictions. And it's all based off of, uh, Moore's law and, uh, the increasing rate or, uh, how, how basically how, how cheap a thousand dollars worth of, uh, compu like how much computational, how much compute can you buy for a thousand dollars for that given year? And over time it goes up because our technology is getting better and costs are coming down more efficient, yada, yada. And he's been making predictions about what technology will, will be capable of based on, uh, the compute, uh, and, He's basically been calling for artificial general intelligence by 2029 and the singularity by 2045-ish. He's been calling for that since like the 90s or even earlier. <laughs> um, and everyone, fucking everyone in the whole world, except for like, you know, a few people, there's like a small community of futurists. Um, everybody else is like, Ray, you're crazy. That's never going to happen. Like, we love your technology, but you know, be more realistic. And now every single year, the experts have been like, oh shit, it's closer than we thought. Oh shit, it's sooner than we thought. Oh shit, oh shit. And so everyone's predictions are starting to come in line with Ray. And then Ray's just sitting here with like a badass, just like, yeah, it's maybe a little bit faster than I thought, but not really. And everyone else is just like, it's happening like 10 times faster, a hundred times faster than we thought. <laughs> Um, so to be following this guy and to just see him get all of this respect and validation years later, um, it's just awesome to see, man. Um, and the same with Brian Johnson, you know, uh, he, he's like the off brand Elon Musk. He, he sold Braintree, uh, for like a hundred million or some shit or more than that, even for a lot of fucking money. Braintree, uh, Venmo, uh, is like a PayPal alternative. Uh, and it was funny cause that's what Elon Musk got rich on too. He's part of the PayPal mafia. So he got rich on an off brand PayPal and then used the money to make an off brand Neuralink, uh, called, uh, kernel, which uses, uh, non-invasive brain machine interfaces to read uh, brain activity. Not right for now. They are, they are working on non-invasive, uh, writable, uh, brain machine interfaces too. But anyway, outside of the scope of this conversation. Uh, he was re pretty much unknown, and I've been following this guy, like a, I've been watching him like a hawk since he launched uh, Kernel. Uh, and then recently he started this whole uh, blueprint thing where he's trying to, you know, basically take all of the current literature on uh, longevity and anti-aging research and put it into practice with a team of experts with uh, an N of one, which is... Uh, fancy term for uh, an experiment with only one participant being himself uh and then they're measuring every possible thing they can freaking measure he's the most measured man in human history now uh and he started hyping all this shit up on social media doing stunts and making weird trolling social media posts and anyway he's freaking famous now too so my you know my heroes that have been like clowned on and obscure for a decade are now getting this recognition uh you know i've been this sci-fi crypto nerd hiding in the dark on the internet for 10 freaking years now and now just seeing like my heroes get validated like this is it's so freaking cool man uh and so anyway uh i don't have the money of brian johnson uh to, you know to change the freaking world or the mind of ray kurzweil to use understand mathematics to make predictions on based off of our computational capabilities uh but what i do have uh is you know 20 plus years of chronic internet use uh and i you know i'm interested in crypto and ai and i've been thinking about how this shit might come together for a long time now and you know 
although I can't emulate the wealth or brains of uh, Brian Johnson and Ray Kurzweil, uh, I think I can follow in their footsteps uh, in the sense of I, I believe I can make accurate predictions about the future uh, based off of uh, cultural implications. Uh, <laughs> um, because there's a lot of content on the internet, but there's, you know, infinity is a big place. And <laughs> I'm willing to bet that I, the genre of AI neurodominatrix stuff of like an AI dummy mommy uh, in the sense of oh, a tick, Jesus, an AI dummy mommy in the sense of you're a brain in a vat and they are the AI in control of your activity and they have complete control if they choose to and they can do whatever the frick they want in that kinky scenario. The type of stuff that people of today are into for BDSM and all that fetish stuff is going to explode. I mean, it's like if, if bra like they talk about like the brain web and like in Cyberpunk 2077, you know, they have like brain uh, recordings where they use it for like porn and shit. the human experience is going to be codified and then modded like freaking Gary's mod, you know? Uh, it's like the, the neurochemical soup that makes you, you is going to be a roller coaster that is programmed and every single thought and experience and emotion is going to be by design. Um, so, and what I'm getting at here is that... <laughs> There's a lot of people in the world right now, but there's not a lot of people that are as interested in neuroscience uh, while also uh, curious about using AI generative content in the lewd hentai genre. So it's like, <laughs> you know, I'm like the, or I will be when AI gets good, I'm like the Bill Nye of like degenerate hentai. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. So just a little bit about, uh, a couple of the, cause I, you know, I don't expect you guys to read the fucking 18 hours of, uh, audiobook content I made a couple months ago. That's more so for my own reference points and for AI to take from in the future. Uh, cause I expect AI agents in the future to be able to go out. You can tell them, Hey, go look through all my previous work and tell me some stuff about it. You know, they'll be able to just do that automatically. Uh, so I'd rather have more content, more data about myself than less and preserve it as best I can. But anyway, uh, so what the fuck are the neuroscience ideas that I've uh, had <laughs> about uh, with the AI dominatrix brain in a vat scenario? Um, it doesn't have to be a brain in a vat. You know, you could have a, a very high fidelity brain machine interface. But the point is that they have full control of your brain activity. You don't actually have to be a brain in a vat. You can still be a human, an embodied human. Uh, but if there's like a neural lace or whatever, a super good brain machine interface that gives them full control over your mind, uh, the same scenario is complete. It doesn't make a difference. So uh, one thought is, uh, you know, there's like the whole face sitting thing and in, in porn and uh, BDSM and, uh, you know, femdom stuff. Uh, well, what if, uh, you know, instead of restraining you physically, uh, they actually in, in, impair your, uh, your motor, your motor cortex. So you can still try to move. Like you can have the intention to move, but your body won't move. It's like locked in syndrome or like when people have sleep paralysis like that, it'll be like programmable though. Uh, and then on top of that, what if, uh, uh, they inhibit your, uh, ability to, form the intention to move in the first place. So your premotor cortex. So rather than fucking up, rather than just paralyzing you, no, no, no. You don't have the capacity to attempt to move. You don't know how to try to move anymore. <laughs> you know, um, I, I, you know, kinkiness and it's all about like dominance and surrender that give and take that back and forth. Um, and I just think, uh, by willing to take on certain uh, brain disorders temporarily, um, there's a lot of room to play there uh, 
in, in fun, playful ways. Uh, you know, another example is like your dominatrix, right? Uh, what if you they give you uh, Capgrass syndrome, so you can't recognize uh, their faces anymore? You know, so like the the face of your favorite neuro your neurodominatrix, you know, the the lady who's been you know your partner for years, all of a sudden, she still looks sort of familiar, but you don't recognize. You can't like tie the face to uh, the person, uh, but then all their behaviors and their speech still sounds the same. So it's super strange, right? Um, very interesting for like torture or like you know toying with oh am i i feel like i'm cheating but i'm not cheating but i am you know just uh interesting psychological playful torture um oh there was another one oh so okay rather than with the body uh messing with the body uh you can also mess with language so like broca's area is uh your ability to like actually form words and like speak uh so you could inhibit broca's area so like they could like she could like fuck up your ability to say words and then demand that you try and dirty talk to her so you're like trying to say stuff and then you're just coming out as gibberish uh they actually have machines uh uh that use uh uh, magnetism to inhibit brain area so you can actually you can see that there's uh uh there's experiments where they have a little uh magnet that they put to someone's head right over their broca's area when they're trying while they're talking and all of a sudden they just start saying gibberish and they take it off and it goes back to normal speech uh i'll try and find that and link it (laughs) um but okay so you know that's that's funny but what if instead of broca's area they inhibit wernicke's area and wernicke's area isn't your ability to speak it's your ability to to comprehend language itself so you can still you could still talk you could still say words if you have had the capability to understand or form words, but you can't even think in language anymore. Now, what the fuck are you going to say? You can just, it's just pure animal grunts at that point. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, that's just a few, uh, funny, interesting, kinky ID. Oh, one more, one more. Sorry. Uh, so there is, uh, an area in the brain called the BNST. Uh, which is, I I forget exactly where it's at, but basically they did uh, autopsies, which is when they cut open dead people, autopsies in um, uh, people that uh, identified as uh, women, even if they had, weren't, like didn't have surgery or take hormones, they just identified as female. Uh, And then they also uh, did autopsies on people that did take hormones. And they found that the BNST, uh, of uh these femboys or trans women or you know you know men that identified as women uh were actually smaller and similar to the bnsts of females than they were to their biological male counterparts who identified as male long story short they found that there is a neurobiological basis for trans identity uh based on the density the neuronal density and volume of the bnst uh super freaking cool uh so i thought well what if you know they used brain machine interface to like artificially grow or reduce the scope the scale of the bnst to basically turn you into if you're you know you could turn you more manly or into a femboy against your will (laughs) just to fuck with you even harder (laughs) okay that's some of my uh fun ideas from my not my novel uh So no need to skim through 18 hours to get the good shit. Um, I really think these ideas and a shit ton more are just going to continue to emerge as we learn more about neuroscience over time. And as, you know, AI gets better at explaining science and predicting the future of science, you know. Uh, And then as that all ties into AI content generation, it's going to make for some very interesting educational hentai smut. Yeah. (laughs) Cheers, guys. See you in Telegram. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs>